will just drain the steam from the main steam line and then full steam on the engine and away she goes. The Tower Bridge was opened in 1898 by the Prince of Wales, not the present Prince of Wales, the previous one. There were two steam engines which provided hydraulic power, which then supplied the eight hydraulic engines which wound the bridge open and closed. You remember at Tower Bridge the roadways each weigh about a thousand tons, but they are counterbalanced and they're just opened and closed with a great big cogwheel. The system of storing the power was a thing called accumulators, which were basically great big plungers in a tower, and they were loaded up with pig iron, such as they produced 750 pounds per square inch water pressure. So when a ship came along, if you wanted to go through Tower Bridge, you simply turned the water tap on, down came the accumulator, round went the hydraulic engines, and up came the bridge. Now, for one descent of the accumulator, you could open and close the bridge twice. So depending on how busy you were, um, the steam engines would be running, keeping the system topped up. Because once the water had been through the hydraulic engines, it was returned to the south side of the river, to the engine house, where the steam engines pushed the water back against 750 pounds per square inch water pressure into the accumulators. So looking at this setup, from here back is the steam engine bit, it's a cross compound, so it's got two cylinders, high pressure, and then the steam is again used in the low pressure. And that's all to drive these hydraulic rams up this end, which are pushing the water back against that huge pressure. That's why, although this is quite a small engine, you can see the thickness of the pinions for the crankshaft are absolutely huge. It's because they're having to push against such a heavy pressure. The engine would just run continuously like this, probably at about this speed, 20 to 24 revs a minute, just keeping the system topped up. This engine was actually put in during the Second World War in 1941. The idea was that they were very worried that the main engine house next door to it might have got hit by a German bomb, and that obviously if Tower Bridge became disabled, it would be quite serious consequences in terms of unloading the ships. So they put this one in. I might add that there was only a six foot brick wall between this engine house and the next one, so I'm sure the bomb would have probably hit this one as well. But that was the idea. Anyway, because this was the last engine to go in, it was the first engine to go out. Anyway, I'd arranged a contractor to come and remove this engine from Tower Bridge because I didn't really think it was a job I could tackle. And he kept on delaying and delaying and delaying. And eventually, somebody from Tower Bridge contacted us and said, look, you've got to get this engine out, you know, otherwise we're going to charge you £250 a week to keep it there. So I took two weeks' holiday, and me and my flatmate went down to Tower Bridge with our little handbag of tools and started to dismantle the engine. It did have an overhead gantry in the building, so there was... You know, it was good basic facilities to do the job. But about two days after we'd started working there, me and Duncan, um, there was a knock on the door and a chap from John Lane's turned up. Well, now, John Lane's had actually sent me a fiver, you know, several months before, and I thought that was very kind of them. This guy came, appeared at the door and said, look, we've heard what you're doing, do you need any help? Lorries, cranes, fantastic. And so we did the job in two weeks. The load came up in two halves. We we stripped all the top work off first and they sent it up to Norfolk and then we had the second load which was the bed plates and the flywheel. We had to hire a crane which at 1974 rates was £300 an hour. Um, John Lane said, well look, if you just pay for one token hour's hire, we'll pay the rest. So we had a great help from them. We did have to arrange to have Tower Bridge closed for um, three hours. They allowed us to close it from 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock on a Sunday morning. I must say the Chief Constable of London was very surprised as to why an anaesthetic registrar from the Westminster Hospital would ever need to have Tower Bridge closed. But when they explained what the problem was, uh, they were very acquiescent. So that's how the engine arrived here. And um, it was then dumped in our garden. I then went away to Sweden to work for six months to earn some money because they paid doctors much better in Sweden. 
came back with my pocket stuffed with Swedish kroner and spent it all on concrete. My friends thought I was completely mad, you know. Hadn't you bought a new car? Oh no, no, I just bought, you know, 30 tonnes of concrete. We laid the concrete, re-erected the engine in the open, and then uh, nine months later I went back to Sweden again to earn some more money to pay for the building. So that's how we financed it really, on a shoestring. So there we are. I always like to think this is the only bit of tower bridge that works properly because it's the only bit that's driven by steam. But... So we'll turn the steam off and... Um... Okay, so we might be lucky next time. We should be able to start from that position. If you start in the wrong position, then you've got to just bar it round.